Barry Briggs epitomized the golden years of Speedway when huge crowds packed tracks like Bellevue, Wimbledon and Wembley. Briggs made a total of 18 world final appearances between 1954 and 1972, winning the title four times. In world finals, the New Zealander piled up 201 points, was only once unplaced and set a standard that will rarely be matched. Mind you, there are other riders who have won more world titles than Briggs. One is Sweden's Ove Fundin, five times world champion between 56 and 67, helping Scandinavia to establish itself on the Speedway map. And there was another New Zealander, Ivan Major, six times world champion. Here's victory number five, Gothenburg, 77. Ivan Major, from the English League Club Exeter, takes the yellow flag to start the last lap. 25, 30 yards ahead of Michael Lee. Ollie Olsen way back in third place. It's the new world champion, Ivan Major. There's the hand so confident off the throttle. The oldest man in the competition takes the three points. Ivan Major, at the age of 39, wins the World Speedway title for the record equaling fifth time. Extending Scandinavia's growing influence, Denmark's Olli Olsen, champion in 1971, 75 and 78. Olli Olsen had learnt much of his track craft from Ivan Major at Newcastle and is currently passing his knowledge on to Scandinavia's new breed. At this point, Britain's last winner had been Peter Craven in 1962. Fourteen years on from that, Peter Collins triumphed at Katowice. Collins looking for a place to come through and finding it on the outside. Collins sweeping around the outside and using tremendous acceleration down the back straight and going into the lead now. Peter Collins in first place, Lucy Stencil in second place. Doug Wire has now got back to fourth place and Zenon Peck has come through into third. But Collins is going further and further out in front. Great riding by the Bellevue rider, and Peter Collins is increasing his lead over the second and third riders. It's Collins out in front coming into the last bend. Collins is going to get three points. Here's his chance going to finish second, and Zenon Beck will be finishing third. In a way, it was the rebirth of the British sport. Other great riders like Malcolm Simmons, John Louis, Dave Jessup, all appeared to have world title potential. But it was only Michael Lee that delivered. A precocious talent from East Anglia, Lee had become the youngest rider to win the British title at 18 years of age. He followed that with fourth place in his world championship debut, then left the rest of the world in his tracks in Gothenburg in 1980. The sadness was that Lee didn't have the temperament off the track for his ability to fully blossom. Since then, Scandinavian domination with Denmark's Hans Nielsen winning the title for the past two years. Still in first place. Hans Nielsen. In second place, it's John Davis, and Davis came through on the inside there. There's going to be a terrific tussle up this back straight. But again, Hans Nielsen just has the strength, the power, and just comes into this last bend and holds it. Hans Nielsen holding off. John Davis in second place. Only the American Pennell and the West German Muller have interfered with Scandinavia's grip on the trophy in recent seasons. Before Nielsen, Denmark's Eric Gunderson took the title in 84 and 85, making it six Danish wins since 1971. Britain has taken the title only four times. New Zealand with Ronnie Moore, Barry Briggs and Ivan Major are the most successful nation with 12 victories. But the current talent lies with the Danes. Gunderson here and world champion Hans Nielsen leading contenders for the 1988 final. Commentator at Vo Yen in Denmark, Barry Nutley. It's only fitting that the 1988 World Speedway final should come here to Denmark because for the past four years, Danes have reigned supreme in World Speedway. The track here at Vo is smaller than the regular world final venues like Wembley or Gothenburg, but it's a good one. Lots of room to pass and the atmosphere is electric. 32,000 fans have braved torrential rain to support their top men. And whilst the favourite has to be reigning champion Hans Nielsen, going incidentally for three in a row, anything can happen. 
Four men go for Britain and main hopes rest with former public schoolboy Kelvin Tatum. So, seven nations, four Danes, four from Great Britain, two Swedes, two Poles, two Hungarians, a Czech and a sole representative from the USA. Five rides each, four laps and the points, three for a win, two for a second, one for third. The highest total after 20 heats takes the title. Here we go with the first heat with the track very wet from an earlier shower but the sun is now beating down. Let's cross our fingers and hope it stays that way. On the inside riding in red, Eric Gunderson from Denmark. Next to him, Great Britain's Simon Wig in the white helmet from Sweden in his first world final, Connie Iverson. And on the outside, an outsider indeed, Roman Polonski from Poland. So that is the lineup. It is very doubtful whether indeed the final would take place today because of the torrential rain. But the track staff have been working very, very hard to get the surface water off. And indeed they seem to have succeeded, but those pretty bikes are going to be very, very dirty within a very few short seconds as the start marshal brings them to the tape. Into the first turn, a bit of shoving, but it's Gunderson takes the early lead. Gunderson in red. Simon Wig hard with him in second place. So Gunderson leads. Wig in second, already stretching out. Gunderson at the end of lap one. Two times world winner, Eric Gunderson, 84 and 85. Beautifully in control. Hugging the inside. Simon Wiggs still there in second. And in third place, it's the pole, Jankowski, disputing it now with Ivarsson. But it's Gunderson looking over his shoulder. Stretching out that gap, some 20 machine lengths now, dropping Simon Wig away down the back straight. The crowd enjoying the sunlight. And a beautiful win for Eric Gunderson. Three points for Gunderson. Wig comes home in second to take two. And third place went to Connie Everson from Sweden to collect the one point. A wealth of Scandinavian talent go in this heat. On the inside, Jan Pedersen, the diminutive Dane who rides for Cradley Heath. Next to him from Hungary in his first final, but due to ride for Bradford next year, Antal Kocho. Riding in white, reigning world champion, going for three in a row, Hans Nielsen for Denmark and Oxford. And on the outside, the Swede, who only last week clinched the Swedish title, Per Jonsson, the Reading racer. Vital for Jonsson that he score, score points in this, because Nielsen riding in the white helmet isn't going to give away any points if he can help it. It's Nielsen. Nielsen and down goes Peterson. Peterson is down. But Nielsen almost taken wide there. But it's Per Jonsson in the yellow leading. Per Jonsson in the yellow helmet. But the race is stopped. The red flags are out. Pick, picking himself up. Tiny Jan Peterson. Five feet three but on his feet. All four go. So with a rerun, all four go again. The referee has decided that no one was to blame for this incident and Peterson, in fact, didn't really inconvenience anyone in coming off, so he goes. Well, the referee has made the decision that Peterson's tumble was due purely to the track conditions and in the light of that has allowed all four riders to come to the tapes for the rerun. So Nielsen will get another chance to gate first and Peterson hopefully will keep it up on two wheels this time but it is very very slick here the rain of course cannot drain away that quickly but a, a quick rerun on that Peterson on the inside next to him Antel Kocho from Hungary Hans Nielsen goes in white and on the outside from Sweden Per Jonsson Nielsen really champing at the bit Desperate to get three points, he has to get off with a maximum if he's going to stand any chance of retaining his world title. They're all the way, Nielsen trailing his leg, heading for the first turn, and Hans Nielsen indeed takes the advantage. 
And there's a good Nielsen is brought down. Pay Johnson went on the inside. Nielsen can't winning his way around the track. And the red flags are out. The race is stopped. And there's Nielsen being attended to by a track marshal. And here you can see how it happens. Jonsson coming through on the inside, drifts wide into Nielsen. Nielsen has no alternative and Pei Jonsson will be excluded from the rerun. The Danish crowd heaved a huge partisan sigh of relief when their hero got to his feet and another rousing cheer when he came through the pit gate onto the track for the rerun of Heat 3, apparently none the worse for being down in the dirt. Hans Nielsen cannot afford to throw away any points at this stage of the competition, but of course Per Jonsson, who brought him down, has been excluded from the rerun, so he will score zero, which gives the Hungarian the opportunity of getting at least one point. So on the inside, the tiny Jan Peterson riding in red, the Hungarian Kocho goes in blue, and Hans Nielsen, two times world champion, reigning world champion, and captain of Oxford Cheetahs, goes in the white helmet in the third slot. Lots of room on the track, only three of them out this time. Start line marshal bringing Nielsen forward. The tapes are up. Nielsen round the outside. But first into the bend goes Peterson. It's tiny Jan Peterson. Nielsen goes around the outside, neck and neck up the back straight. Nielsen in front in white. Peterson in second place, the Hungarian in third. Nielsen needs the three points, can't afford to make any mistakes, riding a beautifully controlled third turn. But Peterson hanging on grimly. Nielsen greatly heats Jan Peterson. Looking a little bit wobbly as he went into that bend. But staying with Nielsen. Nielsen locks it up. The last lap flag is out. One more lap to do for Hans Nielsen from Denmark. Absolutely vital that he gets the three points this time. Jan Peterson's coming home for the two. And the Hungarian having a race all of his own. But Nielsen it is. Nielsen gets the three points. Jano Peterson gets the two. And Anton Kocho from Hungary, third place on the one point. The pride and joy of Great Britain goes in this one, Heat 4. Kelvin Tatum riding in the white helmet. He needs the three points, but he won't have an easy ride because immediately inside of him, riding in blue, is from the USA and Wolverhampton, Sam Ermolenko, known as Sudden Sam because the way, not the way he comes quickly from the back, immediately on the inside, and the number one gate goes to Zenon Kasperjak from Poland. No British League experience for the pole. And another Iron Curtain contender, former ice race exponent, Roman Matasek from Czechoslovakia, rides in yellow and black. But the two men to watch, in white it's Tatum, and in blue it's Ermolenko. The battle will be between these two, as Ermolenko takes the early advantage, but Tatum's still there in second place, hanging on grimly. Ermolenko leads in blue, Tatum in white. And Tatum has to get past Ermolenko if he's going to do anything about having a real chance of lifting the world title for 1988. Third in 1986, Tatum. But Ermolenko looking very calm and composed from California. Captain for Wolves. A regular high point scorer for the Midlands based team. Sam Ermolenko it is, showing Tatum the way round. These two stretching out now over the third place man. Can Tatum do anything? Leaving it into the last lap. The flag is out. It's got to be a last turn stand. Trying to go around the outside. Ermolenko takes it. Tatum in second place in the white helmet. And in third place, riding in yellow, Roman Matosek from Czechoslovakia for the one point.
Heat 5 and an absolutely vital heat for no less than three men running in this because Eric Gunderson, Chris Morton and Hans Nielsen have each earned three points and as early as Heat 5 this could be the turning point in the competition, 15 heats to go but one of them is going to score a maximum, one of them is going to go home with two points and one of them is going to settle for one. The man on the inside, Roman Matosek from Czechoslovakia uh, is an outsider but on the other hand if he gets the bit between his teeth and charges into the first bend he could well spoil the chances for the three men on the outside of him so riding in red it's Matasek from Czechoslovakia Eric Gunderson goes in blue for Denmark Chris Morton for Great Britain rides in white and ride on the outside and he's already gone well from an outside position today so far Hans Nielsen from Denmark in yellow and black Chris Morton, Bellevue captain, would be a tremendous fillip for British Speedway if an Englishman were to take the title back to the UK with him. Riders coming to the line now, pushing the tapes, clearing the engine, an awful lot of smoke belching from Nielsen's bike. So on the inside, Matasek. In blue, it's Gunderson. Riding in white, Morton. And Nielsen in the yellow helmet. The start line, Marshall. Satisfied with their positions. Nielsen watching the mechanism at the side of the track, pushing the tape. Backs off. That's permitted in world final. And Morton picked the wheel up, lost traction. And into an early lead goes Gunderson. So Gunderson leads from Nielsen. Eric Gunderson, champion in 84 and 85, leading in blue. Behind him, Hans Nielsen in yellow and black. The Czech is in third in the red helmet, so a bad heat for Morton. Morton struggling at the back. Gunderson in blue. Looks to be as though he's wrapping this one up. But Nielsen isn't finished yet. Superb ride by Eric Gunderson. Gunderson from Cradley Heath, five years with the Midlands-based team. Eric Gunderson in good control. The last lap flag is out. On their last lap, Gunderson. Hans Nielsen in second. Still in third place, Roman Matasek from Czechoslovakia. One point in his last outing, another one point he'll collect this time. But Eric Gunderson it is, looking over his left shoulder. There's nothing Nielsen can do. Gunderson takes it. Hans Nielsen in second. And in third place, Matasek from Czechoslovakia. Well, a good result for Gunderson. That will help his world championship chances no end because the vital heat over his arch rival and fellow countryman Hans Nielsen resulted in a one point edge for Gunderson. Well, as Eric Gunderson edges himself into an early lead in the competition, the man on the inside in the red helmet will be doing his best to emulate him because Sam Ermelenko has had one win so far and is on three points, so he'll need to win this one. Just outside of him riding in blue, it's Jano Pedersen from Denmark. Simon Wig for Great Britain goes in white. And on the outside, John Jorgensen yet to score for Denmark. And Ermelenko it is taking the early lead. So Ermelenko leads. Wig in second. Man, Wig coming through on the inside, having a look at the inside. But Emelenko closes the door. Simon Wick still with him though. And round the outside goes Jorgensen. So Jorgensen now up into second place. In yellow, Jorgensen for Denmark after two points this time. Pedersen and Wick pushed back into fourth. But Emelenko leading. Emelenko's on for three points so far. And a neck and neck tussle developing now between Jano Pedersen. Pedersen has gone through into second. Simon Wick at the back. Jorgensen in third. But tiny Jan Pedersen now in blue in second place, but the man in front dictating the race from the driving seat, Sam Ermelenko from California, USA and Wolverhampton. Ermelenko leading, heading for six points tally. In second place, still Peterson in blue. And in third place, it's yellow and black, John Jorgensen. Ermelenko takes the three, Peterson in second, and in third place, Jorgensen for Denmark.
We have to assume that Kelvin Tatum has picked himself up psychologically and mechanically from the last heat because he reappears riding in blue. Four points scored from two rides so far, but on the outside of him, on a maximum, Eric Gunderson riding on the outside in yellow and black is Kocho from Hungary, having scored three points, but inside in the red helmet, John Jorgensen from Denmark. So Kelvin Tatum has it all to do, all eyes on the blue helmeted rider as they streak off into the first turn, but round the outside goes Eric Gunderson looking supreme today. Tatum neck and neck with Kocho. Kocho putting in a good performance here this afternoon. But Tatum has already had a severe talking to by his mentor Barry Briggs. He really has to deliver the goods now if he's going to do anything at all. Gunderson in white. Eric Gunderson. Ole Olsen, his advisor, will be jumping up and down. And Olsen, incidentally, also owns the track here, sliding wide. Tatum has gone very, very wide indeed, almost into the fence. Has absolutely blown his chances because through into second place goes Gunderson. Leading, leading the pack in the white helmet it's Gunderson in second place it's Kocho Kocho into second in third place Tatum has gone down into third so Anton Kocho from Hungary has gone up into second tremendous win for the Hungarian Tatum forced down into third because he went wide going into the turn no mistaking the leader nine points from three outings Eric Gunderson from Denmark in second place it was indeed Antel Kocho from Hungary and in third place one point only I'm afraid Kelvin Tatum of Great Britain it really does look at this stage as though his chances of the 88 world final are rapidly diminishing brave ride by the Hungarian round the outside of Tatum neck and neck Tatum almost putting him into the fence but he comes back for more that's how close it was no mistaking the leader a beautifully controlled ride by Eric Gunderson three more points up for grabs and no one needs them more than the man riding in the white helmet Zelen Kasperczak from Poland equal on three each Per Jonsson from Sweden riding in red and Chris Morton from Great Britain riding in blue Simon Wig goes in yellow and black he's got two on his belt so far but also used the three points so this is going to be an interesting heat because it could well decide the minor placings and further down the field ranking at the end of the day in the world final is very important when it comes to signing contracts for league positions for the coming season and for potential sponsorship deals the winner of today's final will take away a first prize supplied by the FIM of three thousand pounds but that is only the beginning of it the sponsorship is really what puts the cream on the cake at the end of the day that's why it's so vital to become world champion and Morton, Morton in blue goes very very wide and through goes Simon Wig Wiggy it is in yellow and black leading so Simon Wig the 1985 long track champion riding with a cracked sternum and also a strapped up knee from injuries sustained earlier this season looking as fit as a fiddle at the moment Simon Wig from Aylesbury doing his utmost to score points in this one he's on for three at the moment if nothing happens and Morton there was chopped off by Casper Jack Casper Jack threw into second took the nose off Chris Morton there going into the third turn but Wiggy it is all the way some 50 machine lengths and Zelen Kasperczak, zero so far, but he's on target for two points if he can hold this. And he's got Morton breathing down his neck. And Per Jonsson at the back, an unaccustomed position for Jonsson. Jonsson now, and Morton neck and neck, but still in second place, it's Kasperczak. And taking the win, Simon Wick takes the win. Kasper Jacket was in second, and it looked as though Jonsson scraped through for third place in red. The tension really building here coming up to heat 11 because Hans Nielsen has dropped a point. He was beaten by Gunderson. Gunderson is away now on maximum. Hans Nielsen has scored five out of six. But on the outside in yellow and black, Sam Ermolenko is on a maximum so far from two rides. He really is the surprise man of the meeting so far today. So Ermolenko sitting on six, inside of him riding in white. Connie Iverson from Sweden having scored four, four points. Nielsen goes in blue and the Hungarian Tihani rides in red on the inside. This really is going to be a head-to-head -head between Nielsen in blue, Ermolenko in yellow and black. And Ermolenko showing hidden form, Sudden Sam as he's known, coming good, 
into his third heat now. He will dearly love to get his hands on the three points. Nothing's going to stop him. And he has a good gate. Ermolenko gates very, very well. But Nielsen in blue into the lead. But Ermolenko's not, not giving up. He's still with him. Takes wide. But Nielsen leading. But Ermolenko can come back. He was looking at the inside line. Hans Nielsen it is, though. Hans Nielsen leading. Stretching it out already to some four, five, six machine lengths into the third turn. Ermolenko having to settle at this stage for second. A very polished performance by Hans Nielsen. Ivan Major will have been whispering words of wisdom in his ear. Somewhere along the line he has to try and pull back that point that Goodison has stretched out. Ermolenko it is still in second. In third place it's Ivarsson, Connie Ivarsson from Sweden in white. The Hungarian bringing up the rear on the last lap now. Hans Nielsen for Denmark. Leading Oxford league rider, British league, impeccable performance. Nielsen takes the win. Ermolenko for Wolves and America in second. And in third place, Connie Everson from Sweden in white. So a good ride for Nielsen. That moves him on now to eight points. He needs to do it. The crowd acknowledging that ride. Well, the restart of Heat 12 and everybody gets a point because it goes without John Davis who slid off and was excluded from the rerun. So on the inside, Matasek from Czechoslovakia, Jankowski from Poland in blue, in the white helmet, Jano Peterson, and Peterson shoots into the lead, round the outside of everybody from the number three slot, and a fine, fine start from Jano Peterson from Denmark, as he heads the Iron Curtain Riders, away round the second turn, stretching that lead now, five feet three of him, nothing at all to this young Dane. He came here with a completely open mind, he desperately wanted to do well and he has indeed turned in some good rides. Peterson leading in white. In second place from Czechoslovakia in the red helmet it's Roman Matasek and bringing up the rear that guaranteed to get one point unless something dramatic happens it's Roman Jankowski from Poland in blue. He's only scored one so far so that will at least double his total from this outing on the last lap. Jan Peterson not having to rush at all now into the last turn Matuszek it is still in second but over the line goes Peterson a fine win by Jan Peterson from Denmark Matuszek from Czechoslovakia in second place and in third place Jankowski from Poland riding in blue for the one point but a good win by Peterson Heat 13 and it really is crunch time for Eric Gunderson starting from gate 4 in yellow and black because he is on maximum 9 points so far but inside him the American Sam Ermolenko the surprise man of the meeting on 8 and can do everything he can in fact has every likelihood of ruining Eric Gunderson's unbeaten run that would mean that Nielsen who's also sitting on 8 points can catch him up and that is a desperate situation for Gunderson to be in he has to win this heat and he can in fact dictate the rest of the meeting if he does win this because he'll go on to 12 that's what he wants to do on the inside John Davis again from Great Britain goes in red in the blue helmet Per Jonsson of Sweden only four points scored so far so nothing really to be gained for Per from this the real battle is going to be between the two outside riders Samo Malenko in white and Eric Gunderson in yellow and black uh, Malenko, three previous world title attempts so far. The only American to qualify this year. Won the USA qualifying round. And I think he might well have surprised himself. Sudden Sam really came good today at Voyans. An outsider by looking at the form so far and the Danes' potential performance. They've monopolized the World Championship over the last four years. Gunderson and Nielsen between them have won the last four titles. Ermolenko not really reckoned to be in the running today, but by golly, he's gone well. And the riders now on one minute. John Davis causing a bit of a hiccup on the inside there in red. But coming up to the tape now, a bit of machine problem earlier on, but seems to have it sorted. Gunderson in yellow and black. A very tense moment for him because he will know this makes or breaks it for him.
anxiously looking over his shoulder Eric Gunderson Ole Olsen is very much in evidence here helping his protege and Gunderson and Ermolenko Gunderson it is Gunderson to the rapturous applause of the partisan crowd here and coming through it's Jonsson Jonsson in blue into second Gunderson leading Ermolenko has been pushed down into third Per Jonsson for Sweden and Reading Racers up into second place but Gunderson streaking away driving this race from the front heading towards a maximum again driving in third place it's Hermelenko in the white helmet but no, no mistaking the leader Eric Gunderson this is taking him towards 12 points it's exactly what he wants to do Hans Nielsen will be an anxious spectator but coming up to the last lap flag Gunderson Per Jonsson in second in the blue helmet so Jonsson looking to move on to seven points Ermolenko can do nothing about it, he's having to settle for third and kiss his chances goodbye Gunderson hit a bump but it's under control, coming out of the first turn he's done it, Gunderson wins Jonsson comes home in second, a good ride by Per Jonsson from Sweden a brilliant win by Eric Gunderson unbeaten so far shakes hands with Per Jonsson because that did Gunderson an awful lot of good Jonsson, the fellow Scandinavian pushed Ermolenko down into third and stretched the gap but no mistake in the start, a brilliant start, an absolutely terrific gate out of trap four for Eric Gunderson. Round the outside, closed the door, there was nowhere for Ermolenko to go, but he had a look at the outside line. But by that time, Pei Jonsson was on the inside line and driving hard. A scintillating performance from Gunderson. A demonstration in speedway excellence, powering to four out of four. 12 points for Gunderson, a very just victory indeed, a good ride by Jonsson for second, and a disconsolate Ermolenka picking up the one point in third. A strong British interest in Heat 15 due to the fact that Kelvin Tatum riding on the inside, gate one in the red helmet, sitting on five points, must win this if he's to move on to eight in order to be the leading British point scorer because Simon Wigg from his last ride moved on to seven. Connie Iverson rides from Sweden in trap two in the blue helmet. Jano Pedersen from Denmark is in the white helmet and on the outside another Englishman Chris Morton from Bellevue only three points so far from his rides not a good day for Chris Tatum also will be sorely disillusioned because he was expecting bigger things but luck hasn't really gone his way he had that machine problem which slowed him when in sight of the checkered flag but he would be looking for the win in this one if he's going to do anything about keeping a respectable position and at least being the pride of the British pack so Tatum in red, that's the man we're looking for. And it is indeed Kelvin Tatum in the red helmet who goes into an early lead. Fighting through into second place and almost drawing alongside. It's young Jan Peterson and he does take the lead. Peterson passes Tatum. So Jan Peterson, it is in white. The tiny, tiny Dane taking the lead now. So he's really hunting for the gold. He's pushed Tatum back into second, but he's making no mistake about this. And he's riding a wonderfully controlled race. Little Jano Peterson, Tatum in second, in third place it's Iverson from Sweden, but Tatum can do nothing about the flying Dane, one of the four Danes really putting on the style today, Jano Peterson, the last lap flag is out, the track drying out as each race goes on, eight, ten machine lengths in it and look at the extra power that this little Dane gets out of his bike due to his lack of weight heading for the chequered flag Jano Peterson in white takes the win poor Kelvin Tatum for Great Britain can do no better than second place and two points and in third place Connie Everson from Sweden riding in blue a tremendous ride by Jano Peterson and he didn't get the gate, he fought the hard way, he came from the back, Tatum was there, he got the whole shot, he slung it sideways, but Peterson had his eyes on him, he drove hard, and by the third turn had caught and passed him. Round the outside, Peterson, powering his bike, going wide of Tatum, and stretching it out, neck and neck, Tatum could do nothing about it whatsoever, even though he has the inside line. Peterson comes across, closes the door, he's hard on the inside and there's nowhere else for Kelvin Tatum to go. He just has to accept defeat and the runner-up spot. 
Heat 16 should be something of a formality for Hans Nielsen because he's not really got any opposition, but he must win it. We have had surprises. His arch rival, Eric Gunderson, has had four wins from four rides. He's sitting on 12 points. If Nielsen has to stand any chance of keeping his championship hopes alive, he must take a three here, which will put him on to 11. They each then will have one more ride, which really can be the decider. If Gunderson wins his next ride, he's won it, but Nielsen must win this one. There is no shadow of a doubt he has to take the win. Nielsen on the inside in red. Next to him, John Jorgensen in blue for Denmark. Roman Jankowski goes in white from Poland. And on the outside, a fellow Pole, having scored two points so far, Zenon Kasperjak. The revs are building, pushing the tape, Jankowski. But Nielsen makes no mistake immediately into the lead just rockets away from the rest of the opposition throws a few crumbs from the table as he streaks off down the back straight he really must take his time settle down Ivan Major will be watching this with his heart in his mouth having guided Nielsen through his career this could have been, in fact it still might be, Nielsen's third consecutive title, but it is rather looking as though Gunderson is going to make him work for it. Nielsen leading. The rest of the battle pulling a celebration wheelie down the back straight, as much to say to the crowd, I've got this one sewn up and I'm going to really deliver the goods in the last one, pulling wheelies over the line. Showmanship all the way for Hans Nielsen. Locked it up beautifully there, playing with the opposition. That's how easy it is. I'd like to see him do that with Eric Gunderson if they had a head-to-head. -head. But there he is, celebrating the win. Superb control. The blue helmet of John Jorgensen came home in second. And in third place, Zenon Kasperczak from Poland to pick up the odd point. But a contemptible display of riding by Hans Nielsen, who really showed the others the way round. His fellow countryman Jorgensen could do nothing about the way he convincingly wrapped up Heat 16. Dynamic gating style from Nielsen, still trailing the right hand leg. Already three machines lengths halfway round the first turn. That's how easy it is for a world champion. A rundown on the title standing so far, leading the table, Eric Gunderson on 12 points. Next to him, Hans Nielsen on 11. Another Dane in third, Jano Peterson on 10. The American Omelenko is on 9. Simon Wig for Great Britain, the best UK performer, fifth place on 7. Matasek for Czechoslovakia on 7, equal with Wig. One more win, that's all Eric Gunderson needs to clinch the 1988 World Individual Speedway title. And he starts from gate one in the red helmet. Tiani from Hungary outside him, Kasper Jack and Peterson on the outside. The only man likely to cause Gunderson any problems, but he's making no mistake. And he's been passed down the back straight by Jano Peterson. Peterson in front of Gunderson. So Jano Peterson desperately trying to get the three because he's on 10 points. What a turn up for the books. It's little Jan Peterson leading Gunderson. This really is spectacular stuff, and it's just what Hans Nielsen needs, little Jan Peterson. What a dramatic turnaround. Eric Gunderson cannot do a thing about it. I was wondering whether there would be team tactics, but there's no such thing. A spectacular Heat 17. Jan Peterson showing Eric Gunderson his rear wheel. Gunderson striving to power his bike around the outside. This really is tooth and nail stuff. They're on their last lap. It's going right to the last bend. Can Gunderson do anything about it? Peterson is staying tight. Gunderson trying. But Peterson it is. Jan Peterson gets the three points. Gunderson gets the two. And over the line in third. It was riding in the blue helmet. I got so excited. Blue take it. That's Tihani for Hungary. But what a dramatic Heat 17. Peterson only had to beat Gunderson to destroy his possible chances or the guarantee of an overall win. And he did it. Gunderson got the gate, but Jan Peterson did exactly what we've seen him do. In two early instances, the back wheel of Gunderson's bike went out into Peterson. But little Jan Peterson was on the outside, leaned on him, shut the door, and just kept on driving, driving, driving. That was a tremendous race. The best action we've seen so far. Peterson took the win, so now we really have a tooth and nail tussle going all the way to Nielsen's last ride.
no mistaking the winner, Jan Peterson. The Danish crowd is delighted, but in the same breath, they're disappointed because it could have wrapped it up all in one go for Eric Gunderson, and he had no answer to his little fellow countrymen. The presence of three English riders in this heat pales into insignificance because the rider in red, Hans Nielsen, has to win this heat to go into a runoff situation with Eric Gunderson because he'll move on to 14 points. That dramatic race by Jano Peterson stole victory from under Gunderson's nose and left the title wide open again for Hans Nielsen to snatch back. It will also sort out the top English scorer because Tatum and Simon Wigg riding in, Wigg is in blue, Tatum's in yellow and black are on seven points. But Nielsen has to win and I suspect the only man who can do anything about that will be Kelvin Tatum riding in yellow and black on the outside. The fourth man, John Davis in white for Great Britain. But Nielsen takes the early lead. Nielsen goes in front. So Nielsen, the crowd leaping and screaming. Tatum pulls a wheelie. The front wheel goes up. He lost his momentum. This race is already looking like Nielsen's. So if he wins this, and it certainly looks as though he's going to, he'll go on to 14 points on one of the most exciting World Speedway finals for years. In blue, Simon Wig is looking for the two-point position. It looks as though he's going to get it. Hans Nielsen has really been given a second opportunity. He lives again. And the head-to-head, -head, the confrontation between Nielsen and Gunderson will be something to behold because whilst firm friends, they are deadly speedway rivals on the track. Nielsen in red. No wheelers this time. No mistakes. No showing off. Take it steady. The gap he has now something like 25, 30 metres coming round towards the chequered flag. Hans Nielsen picks up the three points he needed. In second place it was Simon Wig for Great Britain. And in third place in yellow and black, Kelvin Tatum for the third point. But Nielsen really now goes into a one-to-one, -one, a head-to-head, -head, a two-man tussle to decide the 1988 World Individual Speedway Champion here at Voyance in Denmark. An absolutely immaculate gait from Nielsen. He showed his rivals his back wheel from the first 10 yards going into the turn. There was nothing anybody else could do about it, although Tatum strove too hard, picked up the front and lost his momentum. Nielsen, superb display. Brilliant, brilliant ride. And now the crowd holding their breath because they know they have a battle of a lifetime coming up now very shortly. Heat 20 and an important one for Sam Ermolenko from the USA. Riding in blue because a win here will give him three points and guarantee him fourth place in the competition. Four previous world final appearances. Fourth will not be the best he's done. He was third in 1985 at Bradford. But nevertheless, I would think he's well pleased with his performance today if he can secure this win. Riding immediately on the inside of him, Chris Morton in the red helmet for Great Britain. Nothing Chris can do except add to his three-point total. Antal Kocsor from Hungary goes in the white helmet on gate three. And on the far outside, Roman Jankowski for Poland in yellow and black. But Ermolenko in blue is the man we're looking for. Kocho gates well round the outside. Ermolenko almost locks up. That's through Chris Morton. So Morton for Great Britain. The rain's still falling, but Chris Morton in red for Great Britain. Ermolenko in blue fighting hard round the outside. Kocho of Hungary there. Morton takes off a rip-off so he can see his vision was obscured by flying shale. But clears his lens neck and neck. This is a tremendous heat for the last one. And round the outside and into the lead goes Ermolenko, but he's going wide. Morton hugging the inside line. Good action all the way to the flag. Really good stuff here. Ermolenko still fighting, but goes wide. Morton takes him out into the fence. Ermolenko looking at the inside line. Comes through on the inside. Pushes Morton out. Sam Ermolenko in blue. Morton coming through. The last lap flag is out. One more lap to go. Nail biting stuff, a gripping last heat. But uh, it is indeed Sam Ermolenko in blue leading now, having had a frantic tussle with Chris Morton in the red. Ermolenko comes home for the victory. Chris Morton it is in second. And in third place, the rider in the white helmet, Antal Kocho from Hungary. A very good ride for Ermolenko, but he had to fight all the way. He earned his beer money that time, shakes hands with Morton. He knows it was a good tussle. One of the best races we've seen in the first few laps this afternoon. And Morton took him all the way to the flag. And you can see just how well Ermolenko gated 
but Morton switched his line. He was hugging tight. Ermolenko went wide. It was very slick. Left the door wide open. Morton said thank you very much and drove through. Way up the back straight, still heading Sam Ermolenko. The Hungarian takes off a visor there. But no question about the winner. Sam Ermolenko moves into fourth place in the competition and a well-fought win for him here in convincing style ahead of Chris Morton from Great Britain. The piece de resistance of the 1988 World Individual Speedway Championships. This is what the crowd came for. They hoped we'd get into a runoff situation, and we indeed have a runoff situation between the two top Danes, the men who have totally dominated the world of international speedway over the past four years. Riding in red from gate one, Hans Nielsen, the two times world champion, going for three in a row. And in gate three, in white, Eric Gunderson, also going for his third championship, but he was the winner in 1984 and 1985. He looked all the way through this meeting as though the title was his but it was thrown right wide open in that crucial heat 17 when little Jan Peterson flew through and stole outright victory from under Gunderson's nose causing him to pair off in a head-to-head -head with Hans Nielsen I personally feel that Nielsen gating from gate one will have the advantage but it remains to be seen just what does happen it's over four laps will they demolish the track record who knows the conditions are quite slick because since they last rode we've had heavy rain here so anything can happen Jano Peterson has guaranteed himself a third place on the spot so it is truly a Danish one two three no matter what happens the outcome of this race will decide the title winner and all the perks that go with it it's not just the three thousand pounds individual prize put up by the FIM it's all the sponsorship money the possible Film screen tests, away they go. A good start by Nielsen, but round the outside goes Gunderson. The crowd here are absolutely rising. Nielsen lost traction. He couldn't drive out of the bend. Eric Gunderson controlled the bend. He took the wide line. He was on the dry stuff. Nielsen was on the slippery. He couldn't do anything about it. Eric Gunderson going wide, but they're both going wide because it's so slick. The track conditions can indeed catch both of them unawares. And Gunderson almost locking up. He has to go very, very gently. He'll be breathing in. This will be the longest race he's ever done. Heading towards the last lap flag. One and a half laps to do for Eric Gunderson to clinch the 1988 individual world speedway crown. He's got some 25 machine lengths over Hans Nielsen. Gunderson is looking like a winner. He glanced over his shoulder. There's nothing Nielsen can do. He's accepted defeat. One more bend stands between Eric Gunderson. Outright victory and the spoils of war. Gunderson has won the title. The flag man dances in delight. The Danish crowd acknowledge what has to be one of the most popular victories. Eric Gunderson can't believe it. From having certain victories snatched from underneath his nose, he came back in the runoff to defeat Hans Nielsen. Nielsen, Nielsen, one of the first men to congratulate him. Three in a row was not to be. That privilege stands to the great Ivan Major, who was world champion in 69, 70 and 71. Tremendous achievement. That record still stands. Gunderson getting the traditional bumps along standing tradition in the Speedway world. The crowd absolutely over the moon. A just winner. He fought back in the face of adversity almost when it looked as though Jan Peterson was going to steal victory from his grasp. Nielsen knew what he had to do, but he lost it on the first turn. He drove into the slippery stuff. And Gunderson was driving well. Walks sadly off the track as the rain falls. A very, very sad and heartbroken Hans Nielsen. And it's won and lost on this first turn. Gunderson's got the outside line. Normally it would have been a disadvantage, but in this case it proved to be to his advantage because Nielsen was locked up too much. He was on the slippery stuff. Gunderson took the wide line in, wide line in, the short line out. He was on the dry. He was driving, and from that moment he never looked back. He gave an impeccable display of World Championship Speedway style to leave Nielsen almost floundering in his wake.
acknowledging the crowd. It was that easy once he got underway. There was nothing Nielsen could do about it. We've had a tremendous afternoon. He punches the air with delight as he goes under the tape. A fantastic effort for Gunderson and a very, very popular victory indeed. Confirmation of the result. Eric Gunderson took the final honours on 17 points. Hans Nielsen was the runner-up on 16. In third place, little Jano Pedersen on 13. Sam Amenko from the USA on 12. Simon Wig in fifth place on 9. Per Jonsson jointly with him on 9, joint fifth. Seventh, Roman Matasek from Czechoslovakia on 8. And Kel